How's it going, everyone? This is GWR Studios, and today we are going to be finding some goofs in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. In this video, I'm going to find all the mistakes made throughout the film, and I'm also going to give you my opinion on it. So without further ado, let's get started. Hello, I'm Mr. Conductor, and I'm going to tell you a story about trains, folks far apart, and the Magic Railroad that brought them together. Alright, so at the beginning of the movie, the narrator, or Mr. Conductor, introduces us to Thomas and Sodor. Meet Thomas. He's our number one hero. Hello! Thomas is running late to the station. And here comes the first goof. If we look at Thomas, we can see that his cab doors are missing. This is the island of Sodor, where Thomas and his friends live. So as Mr. Conductor tells us about the island of Sodor, we see different scenes of the trains working hard. And here comes the next goof. Listen closely to the engines talking in this scene. Hello, Thomas. Hello, James. Let's play that again. Hello, Thomas. Hello, James. Did you figure it out? James says hello to Thomas, but Thomas is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> So we continue to see the engines working hard on the railway. Mr. Conductor says he enjoys working on Sodor. By the invitation of Sir Topham Hatt, of course. So things are looking pretty good on Sodor, but Thomas is running a little bit late. Gordon counts the seconds that Thomas is late. Five, six, seven, eight. But finally, Thomas shows up to the station. Now this next goof is incredibly bad, and I can't believe I never noticed it. Take a look at Gordon's cylinder. Look at the big chunk missing out of it. This is Thomas's first time on the big screen, and you use a model of Gordon with a chipped cylinder? That's a really bad goof. I'm counting how many seconds late you are. <laughs> so Gordon's a jerk to Thomas, and he tells him to read the sign. The sign says Sodor Railway, really reliable and right on time. But did you ever look at Thomas's eyes while he was reading the sign? He's reading it backwards. Really reliable and right on time. <laughs> So after Gordon makes fun of Thomas for being late, Thomas tells Gordon that he has to meet Mr. Conductor. I'm meeting Mr. Conductor! As it turns out, Sir Topham Hatt is on a holiday, and Mr. Conductor is watching over things while he's gone. But then, without a moment's notice, a diesel flies through the station. Get out of my way! Kicking up dust all over Thomas and Gordon. But did you notice that Thomas shifted a little bit? Right after Diesel 10 goes by and the cloud of dust flies in the air, Thomas moves to the left. <laughs> Unless you're looking for this goof, it's not very easy to spot. So the diesel goes off into the distance, and Gordon is horrified. The diesel 10's back! <laughs> we find out from Thomas that the diesel is named Diesel 10, and he hates steam engines. But my question is, where did Diesel 10 come from? I mean, just a little bit ago, Gordon was shaking in fear, and what he said was, Diesel 10 is back! The diesel 10's back! <laughs> Why would Sir Topham Hatt allow an evil diesel to come back to work on his railway? Either Sir Topham Hatt doesn't believe Diesel 10 is evil, or he just doesn't care about the steam engines. So Thomas and Gordon both agree they need Mr. Conductor's help. So we leave the world of Sodor, and we go to where Mr. Conductor lives. Shining time. And this is where we hear the first song of the movie. Every now and then, there appears a sign. Okay, this is not Shining Time Station. This is what Shining Time Station really looks like. Not only did they get the shape of the building wrong, but they also got the color wrong. <laughs> so we see people walking around the station, and this is where we see Mr. Conductor for the first time. Place you find. These people are doing such random things at a train station. I mean, you got a guy juggling, some girls throwing bats back and forth, I guess? And who carries a fishbowl with them to a train station? He looks like he's gonna drop it. Going so now we know how old this movie is. There's a telephone booth in it. This is your shining time. Now there's a lot of people that make fun of this song, but it's really not that bad. It kind of welcomes you to the station, and it gives you a feel for where Mr. Conductor lives. But I still don't understand how Mr. Conductor did this. I guess he can just move things with the movement of his hands. So in the very next scene, we cut back to the island of Sodor. And of course, there's another goof. In this shot of Thomas, we can see his wheels move a little bit, and then they just kind of slide on the rails. Again, how do you mess this up? This is Thomas's first movie, and you can't even get a rolling shot of Thomas right. So Thomas heads off to Tidmouth Sheds. At the sheds, we see that James is already there, and he's trying to shoo a fly away. That is still... Now, if you look at Thomas's door, you'll notice that there's something moving back and forth. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a door that's just not painted or what the deal is. But whatever it is, it's gone in the next scene. Alteration! 
Wouldn't it have made more sense if he said, bust my buffers? You weren't concentrating, Thomas. Whoever chose the voice actor for James did a pretty bad job. Lucky for you that the buffers were there. He sounds like a woman. So poor Thomas has been bossed around by Gordon, and now he's being bossed around by James. As it turns out, James is in the sheds because he wasn't behaving, and Sir Topham Hatt wants him to stay in there to learn a lesson. But then along comes Diesel 10 to cause some more trouble. Help you? <laughs> Diesel 10 tells James and Thomas that they're worn out pieces of metal. But while Diesel 10 is talking to James and Thomas, a train car in the background appears and disappears. Now, I've come back to find a lost steam engine. He wants to destroy the lost steam engine and take over the railway. Thomas fires right back at Diesel, and he heads off to find Mr. Conductor. And here's another goof. If you look at the background, you can see the end of the set. So next we head back to Shining Time, and we're introduced to two new characters. A boy named Patch, and a dog named Mutt. You hear that train whistle sooner than it hears itself. We then see Billy Two Feathers driving a train. Billy Two Feathers is one of the engineers on the Indian Valley Railroad. There's just something about this scene that brings back the memories. Later that day, Billy Two Feathers talks with Patch. He had just finished painting the sign and was wondering what the strange lines were on the map. They look like straight railroad tracks, but I can't see any tracks around here except for the ones that you travel on. Billy Two Feathers tells Patch that Indian Valley is mysterious. But Patch can't stay because he has to help Burnett Stone at Muffle Mountain. Does Burnett Stone ever... Hey look, there's the fly that was bothering James. In the next scene, we cut to Muffle Mountain. And this is also where we first see Burnett Stone. Inside of Muffle Mountain was a magical engine, but only Burnett knew about it. We then abruptly cut back to Shining Time Station, and this is where we're introduced to Stacy Jones, the manager of Shining Time Station. Hello, Shining Time Station manager Stacy Jones speaking. Seriously, what is this kid's problem? He's just giving his fish away. I'll miss you, Goldie. Now I'm gonna tell you the next mistake this movie made. We're at Shining Time Station, and Schemer is nowhere to be seen. Now, for those of you who don't know, Schemer was one of the main characters from Shining Time Station, and he was the funniest character on the show. But for whatever reason, he doesn't make an appearance in this movie. But anyway, Stacy Jones shows Billy Two Feathers an old drawing that Burnett Stone did. Burnett Stone. <laughs> Meanwhile at Muffle Mountain, Patch finds Burnett with the mysterious engine. How did you find me here? The mysterious engine is named Lady. Burnett tells Patch that Diesel 10 chased Lady and caused her to crash. Burnett brought Lady back to Muffle Mountain, hoping to fix her back up, but unfortunately, he hasn't been able to. Jesus precious is gold. We then cut back to the island of Sodor, where we see Diesel 10 and his minion Splatter and Dodge. Actually, it's the Splatter <clears throat> and, and Dodge. Diesel 10 tells Splatter and Dodge his plan. He wants to destroy Lady and also wants to get Mr. Conductor. With Pitch? <laughs> The support on Diesel 10's roof is missing. In the previous scene, we saw all the supports on top of Diesel 10's roof, but in the next scene, they're gone. <laughs> I hate it when you do that. <laughs> Back at Shining Time Station, Mr. Conductor shows up. All aboard! <laughs> it is a very important day. So Mr. Conductor tells Billy Two Feathers that he has to go back to Sodor. He also says goodbye to Stacy Jones. But before he leaves, Stacy shows him the drawing she found. Mr. Conductor tells Stacy he's puzzled by the drawing because it looks a lot like the island of Sodor. But ever since the magic engine disappeared, gold dust has been the only way to get there. So after saying goodbye, Mr. Conductor leaves for the island of Sodor. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> When Mr. Conductor arrives on Sodor, Thomas comes to pick him up. I have to see Sir Topham Hatt to get my orders right away. Thomas tells Mr. Conductor that Diesel 10 is back. But Mr. Conductor isn't worried. He says he'll use his gold dust to keep Diesel 10 in order. Old Diesel. Why does this poster show up everywhere throughout this movie? We saw it at the beginning of the movie, and we're seeing it again. And I think later down the line, we're going to see a close-up of it. <laughs> Back at Muffle Mountain, Burnett Stone is worried about Lady. He's afraid he'll never be able to fix her. Meanwhile, Burnett Stone's granddaughter, Lily, is on her way to visit. Her mother and her are walking to the train station, but I never understood this scene. I'm gonna go up this way. Okay. She goes up a fire escape instead of just going through the door. Is she gonna go up there and then go downstairs or something? Or where is she going? And what parent would let their kid do this? I mean, not only is it a stupid thing to do, but it's a rainy day. She could slip on that stair and seriously get hurt. You're coming with me to Grandpa's Bluebird. 
I know how much you like to travel. Isn't she a little old to be talking to a stuffed animal? We then cut back to the island of Sodor. The engines were working hard and were trying their best not to get bullied by Diesel 10. But take a look at the engines at Tidmus Sheds. If you look at Percy, you'll notice that the bottom of his firebox is white. But in the next scene, it's green. <laughs> Henry tells the other engines that Lady is more powerful than Diesel will ever be because she's a magical engine. That's why he wants to find her. The engines decide they want to go find Lady before Diesel 10. But just when Thomas was about to leave the sheds, Harold the helicopter flew over. But what Thomas didn't know was that Diesel 10 had put sneezing powder everywhere. This caused the powder to get all over the engines, even Splatter and Dodge. This must be Diesel's doing! <laughs> look how clean Splatter and Dodge look. Just a little bit ago, they were practically white, covered in sneezing powder. But in the very next scene, they're both clean. <laughs> we then see Mr. Conductor in Sir Topham Hatt's office. He's reading a letter that Sir Topham Hatt left. Sir Topham Hatt, where were you? How is that possible? Before Mr. Conductor lays down on the floor, the picture frame is already past the desk. There's no way he's gonna catch it in time. But somehow the picture frame goes back up into the air so that Mr. Conductor can catch it. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Oh, good afternoon, sir. So Mr. Conductor talks with Sir Topham Hatt on the phone. Sir Topham Hatt wants Mr. Conductor to make sure everything is on schedule. I will be responsible, liable, and really useful. That night, all the engines were sleeping in the sheds. Mr. Conductor was tired, but he was having a little trouble falling asleep. What happens next is really strange. <laughs> so who dropped the ball then? Where did that ball come from? It's not like Thomas kicked it. I think the sheds are haunted. I'd like to have a nice cup of hot cocoa. Would you fellas care to join me? No? What would you rather do instead? Go outside and play? Well, I can understand that. You are talking to a bouncy ball. Is there something wrong with you? What do you think? Why do you keep hitting him like that? You're gonna have to have a timeout. Don't punish the bat, punish your hand. He's the one that pushed the bat into the ball. Hey, I'm just saying, he's the one talking to balls and bats. So as Mr. Conductor gets a drink, Diesel 10 pulls up to the sheds. Time to feast yourself. <laughs> Diesel 10 uses his claw to tear the sheds apart. The noise wakes up all the engines, and they realize that it's Diesel 10. <laughs> you can't catch me, Diesel! Mr. Conductor tries to escape, but he realizes that he's out of gold dust. Now where is that lost engine? <laughs> Look at Gordon's face. It's about to come off. In order to get rid of Diesel 10, Mr. Conductor threatens to put sugar in his tank. I'll seize you up for good! <laughs> This manages to scare Diesel 10 away, but Mr. Conductor now realizes that he's out of gold dust. Oh, but Mr. Conductor, without your sparkle or the lost engine, you can't travel here to help us anymore. Can we all just agree that these engines have terrible voices? James and Percy both sound like women. You just go to sleep now. When Mr. Conductor goes to sleep, he has a nightmare. In the nightmare, he sees Shining Time in disrepair, and he also sees Stacy Jones looking for Mr. Conductor. Why couldn't you travel anymore to the island of Sodor? Is Shining Time really gonna fall apart without Mr. Conductor? I mean, what did he do that they needed him so bad at Shining Time Station? And more importantly, why would his absence cause all of this destruction? I've got to find more gold dust. So while Mr. Conductor tries to find gold dust, Lily is about ready to board a train. And here comes the next goof. How did Mutt transport himself to this station? The last time we saw him, he was at Shining Time Station. And now he's in the big city far away from Shining Time Station. I don't suppose you know where Track 3 is, do you? You do? How dumb is this girl? Don't you see there's a conductor right beside you? He could tell you exactly where to go. Is it that one? No, why not? So Lily gets on the train that Mutt told her to get on, and before long, Lily's train is heading for Shining Time. I know how the moon must be looking down from the heavens. So we then hear a song called How the Moon Must Feel. Lily has no idea she's on the wrong train. When the song comes to an end, we see Burnett Stone reading a book, but in the distance, we can hear a whistle. 
The mysterious whistle is coming from Lady. We then cut back to the island of Sodor. Mr. Conductor is itching James's nose. Tickle all gone now? No, still itchy. After itching James's nose, Mr. Conductor tells James he needs to go to the windmill. There's something important he needs to find. So Mr. Conductor looks for the windmill, but unfortunately, he just can't find it. Well, now I've completely lost my sense of direction. To make matters worse, Mr. Conductor is completely out of gold dust. And he needs a clue from the windmill in order to find more gold dust. Meanwhile, the engines were talking about Diesel 10. They were worried he was going to take over. Diesel is after the lost engine. And if he finds her, I fear that will destroy us all. Why is Toby smiling? He said that he feared that Diesel 10 will destroy them all, but yet he's smiling. This is definitely a goof. What, even an engine as big as me? Yes, Gordon, even you. So once the little meeting's over, Thomas heads off to find Mr. Conductor. How about a race, Thomas? Throughout this movie, we haven't seen any figurines. The only people we've seen are real people. But in Birdie the Bus, we see a figurine. <laughs> So just when you thought this movie couldn't get any more strange, this scene happens. Mr. Conductor finds a letter that was written by a rabbit. The letter tells him that in order to remember something, he needs to eat some vegetables. Plain? Drain? Every time Mr. Conductor takes a bite, he remembers something. Mountain? Fountain? I think I'll try the celery. He keeps taking bites out of the vegetables until finally, he figures it out. Wait a minute. Beach! That's it! That's it! <laughs> it's official. Mr. Conductor has gone insane. So by eating the vegetables, Mr. Conductor remembers that his cousin is on vacation at the beach. Mr. Conductor needs to call his cousin, but he can't find a phone. Huh. Are we sure we're not watching Alice in Wonderland? I mean, talking rabbits and flowers that work as phones? The island of Sodor is crazier than I thought. Hello? Junior, you've got to come here right away. I'm counting on you. Mr. Conductor tells Junior, who still has some gold dust, to bring his emergency gold dust to Sodor. Meanwhile, Lily's train has made it to Shining Time Station, but this isn't where she was supposed to go. What does that mean? Well, maybe next time you won't take advice from a dog. Lily gets off the train and goes into the station, but nobody's in the station. Where is everyone? But then, Lily hears something coming from the painting. It's Junior, Mr. Conductor's cousin. Hey, yeah. I'm Lily, who are you? I like how she's so calm about this, like it's a normal thing. See you, Junior. See you, Lily. So Junior heads to the island of Sodor, and Mr. Conductor is waking up from sleeping in the grass. Just then, Thomas puffs by, looking for Mr. Conductor. Mr. Conductor! Mr. Conductor! But he doesn't see that Mr. Conductor is behind a bush. Back at Shining Time, Stacy Jones finds Lily in the station. She tells her that her grandpa is very upset since she got on the wrong train. So Stacy takes Lily to her grandpa. They meet at an intersection. Stacy. Hello, Lily. Hi, Grandpa. Well, this is awkward. I'm out of here. Well, have a good evening, Burnett. Stacy heads back to Shining Time and leaves Lily with her grandpa. They then head to Burnett's house. That night, Burnett and Lily hear more whistling sounds. Even Patch, who is outside working his horse, hears the whistle. Back on the island of Sodor, the engines were working hard into the night. How does Mr. Conductor travel here? When Percy arrives at Knapford, he talks to Thomas about Mr. Conductor. They wonder how he gets to the island of Sodor, and wonder if there's a magic railroad or not. Oh, he talked about buffers in his sleep. Buffers are at the end of a railway. I think that's how he travels here. The bottom of Percy's smoke box has changed from green to black. <laughs> Diesel 10 was spying on Thomas and Percy, and when he pulls out of the shed, we can see a red wire in his cab. <laughs> Diesel 10 now knows about the buffers. Diesel heard every word you said. Toby decides he's gonna go after Diesel 10 to see what he does next. Oh, you're very brave, Toby. Oh, Diesel won't bother with an old engine like me. He thinks I'm really useless. So Toby, the really useless engine, goes to check on Diesel 10. What he finds is that he's talking with Splatter and Dodge. You, you guys, look! It's Reginald! They've moved him to the scrapyard! I will remember you Will you remember me? We'll miss you, Reginald. Hooray! Hooray! Oh, wow. We're gonna have a party! I love party! Yes! Yeah.
Diesel 10 tells Splatter and Dodge that he wants to destroy the Magic Railroad. It's time to finally put Twinkle Toes lights out. Toby hears Diesel 10's plan, and he rings his bell to distract them. This causes Diesel 10 to overreact, and he knocks over the shed with Pinchy. Toby is glad that he slowed Diesel 10 down. Good show. So after a song plays, we see Thomas and Henry talking. Morning, Henry. What's the matter? I've got boiler ache, and I'm collecting one, two, three, four, five, six trucks of special Island of Sodor coal for you. Toby only runs on Welsh coal, not Island of Sodor coal. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. But when Thomas goes to collect the six trucks, one of the trucks doesn't couple up. The second to last truck derailed. So the truck that didn't couple up goes through magic buffers, and Thomas has no idea. Hello, Thomas and your five coal trucks. Five? But I'm supposed to have six. Later on, Thomas meets with Percy at a water tower. Thomas tells Percy about the missing coal truck, and they realize that the buffers lead to the magic railroad. Thomas tells Percy to guard the buffers while he goes to find Mr. Conductor. Mr. Conductor is walking across a bridge. But then, from out of nowhere, Diesel 10 shows up. Twinkle Toes, remember me? Mr. Conductor tries to escape, but it's too late. Diesel 10 grabs him with Pinchy. <laughs> Diesel then threatens to drop Mr. Conductor off the bridge unless he tells him about the buffers. Tell me where the buffers are. Now! Mr. Conductor then realizes that he's carrying pliers. But as soon as he gets them out, a magnetic pull takes them away from his hand. Finally, after stretching his arm out as far as possible, he manages to grab the pliers. He then cuts one of Diesel's hoses and is flung in the air to the windmill. This must be the clue to unlock the source of the gold dust. Mr. Conductor reads mysterious lettering on the side of the windmill. It says, Stoke up the magic in the mountain and the lady will smile. Then watch the swirls that spin so well. But after these two phrases, the rhyming disappears. Oh, where is the rhyming gone? Meanwhile, Splatter and Dodge make fun of Diesel 10 for letting Mr. Conductor escape. Well, I, I did it on purpose. You know, I was uh -oh, testing him to see if he could. Out of frustration, Diesel 10 hits the coal loader, and coal pours out on top of him. <laughs> now that's gonna ruin Hold on a minute. We just saw Henry passing Gordon, but now he's right beside Splatter and Dodge. Back at Muffle Mountain, Lily meets Patch for the first time. I'm Patch. I'm Lily. Patch invites Lily to go with him to Shining Time Station. Together, they ride a horse to Shining Time Station. When they arrive at the station, Lily sees Mr. Conductor's cousin, Junior. Junior? Junior tells Lily that he's going to the island of Sodor, and he invites her to go along. What do you think, Mutt? <coughs> okay. So, Lily and Junior head off to the island of Sodor. Along the way, they see Thomas's missing truck. It went through the buffers and was in between the railroads. So Lily and Junior successfully make it to the island of Sodor. Thomas sees Junior and thinks that it's Mr. Conductor. There's Mr. Conductor! But after getting closer, he realizes that it's Junior. You stuffed party poppers down my funnel! Hey, we had a laugh. You did? Junior and Lily get in Thomas and they search for Mr. Conductor. In no time at all, they find Mr. Conductor at the windmill. Mr. Conductor explains that they need to get more gold dust, and he thinks he knows how to make it. Stoke up the magic in the mountain, Mr. Conductor forgot the rhyming on the windmill. The rhyming was their only clue at making more gold dust. And then, for some crazy reason, Junior decides to ride the windmill. Junior, what are you doing up there? It's too windy! Are you saying that on any other day it would be acceptable to ride a windmill? This is just like the fun fair! But after not listening to Mr. Conductor, Junior is flung by the windmill. Thomas literally doesn't care. Incredibly, Junior lands on Diesel 10. Twinkle Toes Junior! Junior then proceeds to surf on Diesel 10. Yeah. Meanwhile, back at Muffle Mountain, Patch has to tell Burnett Stone that Lily is missing. I'm sorry, Mr. Stone. She wasn't at the station when I went back for her. It's okay, Patch. We'll find her. Your granddaughter has been abducted by a 12-inch tall man, and you're not concerned? This movie. Back on Sodor, Percy discovers that Splatter and Dodge have found the magic buffers. Oh, now what's going to happen? Now coming up next is one of the strangest goofs I've ever seen. Look at Percy's lamp.
If you look at it hard enough, you'll see that it moves. <laughs> Pretty creepy. Oh, I better hurry back and warn Thomas. Percy heads back to warn Thomas about Dodge and Splatter. Mr. Conductor and Lily were camping out for the night. When Lily and Mr. Conductor talk about the mysterious whistling, Mr. Conductor remembers the clue. I've heard a train whistle and it sounded like it was coming from the mountain. Mountain. Stoke up the magic in the mountain and the lady will smile. Mr. Conductor tells Lily that they need her grandpa's help. Little do they know the magic engine is hidden away in Muffle Mountain. Burnett tells Patch that the magic railroad needs Lady, but he doesn't know how to get Lady running. And I need to know it now more than ever. Percy tells Thomas that if they don't take Lily back to her grandpa, Diesel might destroy the magic railway and Lily would be stuck on the island of Sodor. So Mr. Conductor tells Thomas to take Lily back to Muffle Mountain. I'll try! So Thomas takes Lily to the magic buffers. Thomas makes it through the magic buffers and travels through the magic railway. But I'm not afraid! Along the way, Thomas sees his missing coal truck. Thomas and Lily decide that they should go pick up the truck because it might be part of the clues. Thomas couples to the coal truck and they continue with their journey. You're a really useful engine, Thomas. Thomas's coal truck is missing. <laughs> Finally, they make it to Muffle Mountain. Why is there no bridge? How did Lady even travel to the Magic Railroad? Assuming this is the only set of tracks that leads there, it would be impossible for an engine to get there. I think I feel a, a little dizzy. Lily leaves Thomas to go find her grandpa and promises to come back, but a gust of wind blows Thomas off the mountain. I left the coal truck behind. Lily runs into Patch and gets a ride to her grandpa's. I know I can count on you. Thomas continues to roll down the hill and eventually goes into the ground. Back at Muffle Mountain, Burnett Stone is worried about his granddaughter. He needs to get Lady running more than ever. Grandpa! Oh, Lily. I'm so glad to see you. If he really was so glad, wouldn't he have been a little more enthusiastic? I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad to see you. I was so worried. There's this island of talking trains. And they said you might have been there. Lily tells Burnett that they have to go back to the island of Sodor. But Burnett tells her that he can't get Lady to steam. I can't make her steam. Lily then remembers that they brought a coal truck from the island of Sodor. Lily There's tells Patch to go get some of the coal. Do you think you could get some? Of course I will. Back on the island of Sodor, Diesel 10 is taking Junior on a high-speed ride. I will be! This scrapped engine looks a lot like Donald or Douglas. Right after Junior is flung from Diesel 10, the screen shifts to the right. I'll play it at normal speed so you can see it better. James! James is missing his whistle. So just when it looks like Diesel 10 is going to destroy James, Junior blows his whistle one last time. The whistle has just enough gold dust to help them escape. And we can see that James's whistle is back. Bye, James! <laughs> If we can see Junior's shadow, shouldn't we see James's shadow? That would have added more realism to the movie. Can't you see James's shadow moving along the screen? Sorry to be so long, cuz. Mr. Conductor and Junior realize they're completely out of gold dust. But we are not down. Little did they know the magic engine was on its way. Burnett had finally got Lady to steam. They were off to the island of Sodor. Oh no, it's that teleporting dog again. Who does he even belong to? Does he live at Shining Time Station? Or does he live with Burnett? Maybe he's a magic dog from the Magic Railroad. I don't know, what do you guys think? So apparently there's another way to get to the Magic Railroad. It's just right through the tunnel. Along the journey, Lady produces magic gold dust. Railroad's getting its energy back. Lady keeps going and finally makes it to the Magic Railroad. And when she makes it there, she gets a face. So, Burnett, you didn't forget about magic. It's safe inside you. And what happens next makes absolutely no sense to me. Thomas! You found her! And she's beautiful! How did Thomas make it back to the Magic Railroad? We saw him go through a hole in the ground, but this just doesn't make sense. Is it like an endless loop of tracks? Like, no matter which route you take, you always end up on the same track? I guess that's what makes it magical. So Lady and Thomas make it to the island of Sodor. We're on the island of Sodor! They then find Junior and Mr. Conductor. 
Do you realize who this is? I reckon this is one beautiful engine. Junior then realizes that this is the lost engine, but Mr. Conductor tells him they still need gold dust to get back to shining time. Without it, the magic can't exist. Just then, Thomas shows up on the island of Sodor. And what took him so much longer? He was right behind Lady. Aha! There's the blue purple! Unfortunately, Diesel 10 finds Thomas and Lady, and he sets off to destroy them both. Thomas decides to help Lady escape, and Burnett Stone decides to help too. I'll not let you down again. Ah, who needs you? Did you just hear what Diesel 10 said? Instead of calling Splatter and Dodge by their individual names, he called them Splodge. He mashed their names together. I never noticed that. Lady, Burnett Stone, and Thomas all leave. They have to get away as fast as they can. Ah! What's the matter? Mr. Conductor realizes that the magic engine is Lady. She's part of the source of the gold dust. Gold dust! Thomas and Lady are now in a high-speed chase with Diesel 10. <laughs> Big cheese, hungry! Ooh, get back! And here comes the next goof. In this next scene, we can see that both Lady and Thomas are smiling. As the chase continues, there's another goof. On top of Diesel 10 is a figurine. There it is, you can see it right there. Believe it or not, there was supposed to be two villains in this movie. Not too long ago, this video leaked showing an evil character named P.T. Boomer. He was supposed to originally be in the movie. In fact, the entire movie was supposed to be completely different. But for whatever reason, the movie was changed and P.T. Boomer was taken out. But in this one scene, they forgot to remove P.T. Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> As Thomas and Lady approach the viaduct, we see Burnett Stone talking to Lady. But in the next scene, Burnett's nowhere to be seen. Come on, Lady! Little engines can do big things! As Lady and Thomas go over the viaduct, it starts to crumble. And here comes the next goof. When Thomas goes over the crumbled section, we can see a rope pulling him. Thomas makes it over the bridge just in time. But shouldn't we see some smoke from Thomas's stack in the air? Well done, Thomas! Well done! So Thomas and Lady are now safe, but Diesel 10 is in big trouble. <laughs> Diesel 10 is now smiling. Okay, there's two things wrong with this scene. Diesel 10 was in a vertical position, but when he falls, he's in a horizontal position. And there's no way Diesel 10 could have landed perfectly in that barge. He would have had to rotate nearly 180 degrees in the air. A nice time of the year for a cruise. <laughs> After the chase is over, they discover how to make more gold dust. By mixing the gold shavings with a little bit of water, gold dust could be made. Throw it up in the air. Mr. Conductor and Junior were so happy, they finally had gold dust again. Lady, you're a really helpful engine. Before leaving, Junior gives Lily some gold dust. Mr. Conductor lets him work on the railway, and he takes off. Oh no, not this again. Oh yes, Sir Topham Hat, sir. Sir Topham Hat calls Mr. Conductor to see how things are going. Everything is under control. Goodbye, sir. Mr. Conductor then heads back to Shining Time. Lily gives her grandpa the gold dust, and her grandpa decides to put it on the bluebird. Now, we'll always remember our Shining Time together. We then cut to a country scene. And do you see that family walking down below? Believe it or not, this is a scene from the original movie. Patch and Lily get married, and this is their family. Another fun fact, Lily was supposed to narrate this movie. So we head back to Shining Time, and we see that everything is back to normal. Everyone's happy, doing their own thing. And Mr. Conductor is working at Shining Time again. I wouldn't eat that if I were you. There's gotta be a ton of nasty chemicals in that box. And so we've come to the happy end of our story. And it's time for all of us to go home. Just like Thomas. And you thought that was it? Nope, there's one more goof. It's in the credits.
In the credits it says the trains and it says the people that voiced them. But under the list of the trains, we see Birdie, Harold, and Annie and Clarabelle. These characters are not trains. <laughs> And that was Thomas and the Magic Railroad Goofs. These were all the goofs that I spotted, and I just want to thank you guys for supporting these goof videos. It's been incredible, and I've had a lot of fun making them. And don't you worry, Season 2 will begin very soon. Now, if you guys saw some goofs that I didn't point out, be sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and as always... Look out for the train.